project I Okay, good to know. <laughs> uh, uh, so the goal of this project is basically to show you guys ideas for what you can do with existing AI services that exist today, and then kind of walk through a couple of them, how they work, just to like uh, basically disamuse you of the idea that these are scary or hard to use or anything like that. They're, they're actually very accessible and people should and can be using them today. So the overall goals, I mean, I want to act as, I want this presentation to act as, oh, you're not seeing this? Okay, okay, okay. So it's probably because the slideshow's on. Is this PowerPoint? Yeah, how do I end the slideshow now? There's all steps. I, I just end oh, it. <laughs> I'll just end the slideshow. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So I want to act as a segue between last the last uh, group session and the next one, which was Grady's great description of how LLMs work. And so now that you guys have a basic idea of how LLMs work, I'm going to show you guys different AI applications as they exist today. And maybe some of them impress you, maybe some of them scare you. And that brings us to Leia's talks about trustworthy AI, which is our super important and uh, also part of the program that she and I are both in, which is all about designing trustworthy AI systems. So to go over the basics of this project, I wanted to build a system in which I could take any video of uh, some sort of sport or esport, and be able to generate commentary from it. So I had to figure out what the best way to do that was. So coming from a computer vision background, my immediate thought was, if I'm able to take the labeled data of a game, I could then interpret that as training data and then train a model to understand certain aspects of the game. The issue with that is it requires a ton of data, like a ton, a ton of data. And these are all complex actions. So if you're looking at, let's say, let's use soccer. All these complex actions are happening. The context of when the ball is passed, when the ball scores, who has possessions, things like this are hard to capture through computer vision data. And it would take a lot of me labeling data personally. So I wanted to come up with a better solution or an easier solution to the problem. And I figured that would exist in basically getting LLMs to act as the data for me. And the way that I did this is kind of cheating and kind of not cheating. And I'll explain how that works uh, in a bit. So what I wanted to do is go through the game, have the game play itself out. As it plays itself out, gather the context of the game to be able to prompt an LLM to tell me what's happening and use that information to then generate the commentary from it. The idea was to do this in real time. However, as I'll explain as we go through it, the ability of anyone to do this kind of work in real time is at this current point in time near impossible. And we'll talk about what gets us there eventually later on down the line as well. So I, we're at the point where I get commentary out of, out of an LLM. Then I wanted to add on top of it, a more of a personality. So I used a uh, text-to-speech generation. I used a, some, a company called Eleven Labs, which actually has a superior uh, voice to, or text-to-speech API, even more so than uh, OpenAI's. And they also have instant voice cloning. So what ended up happening was instead of generating an AI sports commentary system, what I ended up discovering was that this was the perfect tool for uh, almost like, like influencers and streamers to generate content of their gameplay with. So the system could learn their voice, learn their the habits of their speech, and be able to speak out AI commentary of their gameplay without them having to do anything. So the final version of this software was actually a system in which you show gameplay, the gameplay then generates the commentary, does it in your voice, and then when the once the gameplay is completed, it will generate a video of you playing the game with your AI-generated commentary without you having to do anything. 
So did you create that or that's part of the API? Like so that's, that's the project that I've created. Oh, okay. Right. Like digital like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many hours and hours. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, demo part one. Can I get a volunteer from the crowd to be our esports influencer for the day? I see your hand. That was a no. That was a nose go. So you're in. <laughs> so yeah, come on down. I just need you to speak into a mic right here. Live demo. Yes, I know. <laughs> Mostly what this group does is we record live demo failures. And yeah. <laughs> well, let's hope this is not one of them. So, all right. So what's going to happen is the code will start. It'll say three, two, one. And then I'll ask you to read it'll be this text here. So it needs about 30 seconds. <laughs> You're basically just going to describe the, prog the project to me. All you do is read this. All right. So well, like, am I supposed to be like using like. As it, like I'm supposed to mimic like oh like sure yeah that would actually help it. <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm gonna the, the cadence of your yeah, voice yeah. will be recorded. But like okay, yeah. just to make sure like is we went we were talking about like soccer and and like commentating for a second as if it's like you're watching like right. on TV. But then we kind of went into like a streamer playing. Was it like video yes, gaming? Yes. So, so like what's the your your role play in this scenario is you are a streamer. <laughs> I'm a streamer, not yes. like not the like TV commentator. Yes, okay. exactly. You're a streamer here. I'm just so. gonna read it. Yeah, so hold on, let me start it. Oh, you have to stream about the streamer streamer. <laughs> <laughs> How you're like, in this project, we present. And I, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, every every streamer has their gimmick, so maybe there's a, a, maybe an, a, you know, a deliberately boring, trying to be funny. <laughs> okay, tell me what to do. In this project, we present an innovative approach to sports broadcasting applicable to both traditional sports and esports. By implementing AI generated commentary with games, our project not only enhances the viewer experience, but also helps streamers become content creators. This system provides dynamic and context aware commentary, mirroring the actions in video, and it offers streamers the advantage of engaging with their uh, audience while providing commentary at the same time. Our approach demonstrates the transformative that potential. That's it, okay. but let's finish recording. That's that's all the data that it needs to clone your voice. And so okay. now what will happen is it will start up the game and I just have a computer play the game out. So the computer will play the game out in the background. And then what will happen is it will generate, there's a separate thread in here that's running chat GPT completions. And when it runs all the chat GPT completions, it will then spit out a list of keyframes and generated commentary. And then it will send all of that to 11 labs, create your voice, and then it will spit all of that text back out in your voice. And then the Pi Movie library will go through and edit a video of the actual gameplay happening. So as you can, you can see that kind of happening here now. Can what cool. are your prompts to chat GPT? We'll go over that in a second. Okay. Can I ask if you're comfortable yeah. taking a video of it? Of course. I can show my friends family because they're not going to I'll send the video by email if you want. <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the whole session. All right. All right. Yeah, don't worry. I'll send it to you. And don't worry. I'll delete all your voice data after this, too. <laughs> so this is this is the part that's meant to scare you. You just read, like, a paragraph. And I now can un unlimited amount of your voice into anything I want to do. So, th yeah. This is why. Like, this is probably. What they say? Like, this. No. Except that, however, they don't no. tell you like you have to include something with an R or something. Nope. There's no there's no specific need. Obviously, like the more diverse the data, the better, but there's no specific necessary data required. Just about 30 seconds of any speech will do. So is this, is this a lot of it's like is the chat GPT just lang chain usage that needs through an API to get it, or is it something else like to get queries back? To get queries back, it's it's just running the, the chat completions on their cloud hardware. Okay. So, and I'll go over that, that part as well. So I wanted to tell you guys how I'm basically achieving also to give full you know, context to how this works. So the way that I get all the information to create the generated commentary is by using something called Google Football Engine. It runs like FIFA, but what it's made for was Google made this Google football engine in order to basically create an AI system that could play football 
in the most like idealistic way possible. It's the same way that uh, Alpha Go works and Alpha uh, Chess and, and other AI projects to basically perfect a game. So they created something for specifically for football. However, I am hijacking their context API in order to take certain key moments of a game and turn them into generative AI and commentary. It's cheating. However, I truly believe that this will be all games in the future will have a separate API that is spitting out context of the game specifically for generative AI systems to manipulate. And I believe this because this AI commentary is not the not my idea necessarily. And it's already being implemented by companies like Tencent who are doing it for games such as Dota, for example. So it's going to exist in the world. And when it does, it is going to be a ton of automated and generated content for these games on the internet because not every streamer wants to be on camera. Not every streamer wants to talk about the game they're doing. Some people are just amazing at the game and they would rather let the gameplay speak for itself. This is for those people essentially. So I went through a lot of going through different models to try to see how it would work with different setups. So I actually worked, I did this on GPT-2, GPT-3.5 and Llama-2. The difference was that when I was running GPT-2 and Llama-2, I had to run them locally because there wasn't like an API set up for them. And I wanted to go over that experience for people who want to work with AI models in the future. When you work with AI models in the future, you have to understand the pros and cons of using a local model versus an API. For, and so basically, if you use a local model, the thing you have to understand is that these models are enormous and only getting larger. These, the models that we use today for uh, basically LLMs, the L is for large and they, they actually mean it. These are huge, huge models. I, I could not run, this is a surface pro. It would not even dream of running an LLM on it. But if I run it on my home computer, which has a 3080, I can run up to the 8 billion parameter model for Llama 2. That is insanely small, considering I think chat GPT-4 is closer to a trillion parameters. So that's, that's a huge con to using a local model is that I can't even run the highest level models myself and it's super slow. That being said, if you are using local models, it's probably because you want to do a ton of free use and training. And that's a really good pro to have. However, it's probably easier to use the API because the API will be faster running on cloud hardware at probably open AI somewhere that they're, they're using V100, A100 chips, which can run at a hundred thousands of times better than your home computer could. And the only downside of that is that it costs money. So I wanted to give that kind of context about local versus API models and why that my project is using APIs rather than localized models. And, it, and for open AI, it actually, one of the downsides normally would be that you wouldn't be able to fine tune or train models yourself if you're using an API. But for OpenAI, they actually do allow you to fine tune models. And I'll actually give a quick demo of how that works toward the end. So I wanted to go over some of the services and where I'm getting them from. So as I've already said, we're using chat completion for OpenAI. And we're, I also wanted to highlight the power of image creation which I can show in a separate code example. Uh, I'll do that in a moment. Another useful tool that OpenAI offers is transcription through their Whisper model. This is, I, I think people forget about this, but it's actually one of the greatest achievements of OpenAI because transcription as it existed before the Whisper model was actually very weak. It was, the accuracy was terrible. If you wanted to glean data from online videos, it was not the strongest. But with the Whisper model now, they're near perfect. Uh, and they don't, they doesn't take a ton of uh, heavy compute to run it. So I'll actually, I'll show off Whisper when I show off the uh, fine tuning as well. And then for 11 labs, I'll give a brief uh, description of 11 labs later on as well, um, where I'll run you through how the, the site works and how I use the API and such. So I'll jump right into coding examples. So for, For my projects, 
the way that I handle these prompts is basically taking the game information and basically generating simple prompts based on context of the game. So this is a this example is just a switch case, right? So or a, a large elif for every possible game mode. So the game modes are just some number in the back end here, but every time it changes, I keep track of it and I send a some sort of commentary prompt to GPT about it. So for example, if there's a free kick, the game mode will change to three and then I'll send in the prompt that there's a free kick. And you can add, and there's a, like, depending on how good your API is, the more context you can add to it. So if this had access to what player, how far they kicked it, if it's a quick breaks, things like that. Things that like FIFA has, but not necessarily this football engine. And you can just add more and more to that. And you'll see that in the output of the game itself. So another thing, so this is all chat completion. All this is sending a prompt in, getting the chat completion response. And the way that it usually works is uh, when I when I go through the prompt, I basically set up I set up a scenario. And I want to see if I can show you guys the scenario that I've shed, I've set up here. Uh, I'm not sure which part of the code it's in, but basically. The way that the training, the GPT completion works is you set up the context of what the system is. And I say the system is you're a AI, you're an AI football commentator or streamer. And every time something happens, you react to it. And another, so this is an inventive way to create it where it acts like a person. However, you could also tell GPT to act as a machine. And I have a separate example that I can show uh, of that happening as well. Why, so, sorry, why would you want that? I will tell you right now. So here is a Python API that I put up. In this Python API, I am trying to get information about computer vision classifiers. So I give it one classifier and I tell it I want a hundred more classifiers that are similar to it. I don't have that data. So how do I get it? I generate it. And I generate it in the way that I the way I generate, I want it to be able to be used as an API service so that I can pass it down to other services down the line. So what I tell GPT is, you are a machine that outputs JSON lists named alternative phrases. Mm -hmm. And then I use this parameter here called the temperature. Whenever you're running one of these requests, you can adjust the temperature. A temperature of one means you are going to go with exactly what the prompt says and you're not going to be creative or do anything crazy with it. A temperature of zero would be the opposite. So I think generally speaking, GPT-4 will be set to like 0.7 or 0.75 or something like that. But for this system, I turned the temperature way up for this so that it only spits out JSON. Because if it doesn't spit out a JSON list, then the API just craps out. It doesn't work. So that's an ex another example of how you can use the chat completions in a service where you don't necessarily want it to act as a human, but as a machine generating more data for you. The next service I wanted to talk about was um, probably 11 labs, which I'll show you a brief demonstration. And this will be a great test of whether or not audio is even working here. Uh, so this is 11 labs. It costs me about a dollar or five dollars a month. So the usage of this API, and there is a free tier, but the free tier does not include voice cloning. The point of what I'm saying is that the, the API is actually very easy to learn uh, and not too complicated. But as you can see here, there's a bunch of cloned voices I have, and they all have IDs that I can use in my code. And I'll show you guys where I use it. Oops, going here. So I'm generating based on the commentary. I use a voice, and that voice is coming from. Oops. That voice is coming from where I cloned the voice at the beginning of the run. So this is all the code I'm using for 11 labs is clone a voice. I get that voice's ID from this voice variable, and then I use it to generate 
after the fact. So what you're seeing right now in the terminal, by the way, is called MoviePie. It took all of the generated audio that I created, and right now it's syncing it up with the background of a stadium that I also added. So it's going to run those two audios next to each other to create the audio for my video. And then the next step is it runs the video of the gameplay and then overlays the audio so that you end up with a full video audio of what happens in the game. And so the 11 labs, and you can just play with 11 labs on the website itself. For example, I can just click use, uh, and there's probably, I can just type anything here. So you can play with this to see if whether or not- Hi all, it is Kevin, I am a robot. That was really loud, <laughs> but it's fast and easy. And as you, you know, it sounds like me. Uh, so just by, to buy me some more time while this finishes the, the run, uh, I could also quickly go over how I had to update this slide like a couple days ago because I wanted to highlight OpenAI's image creation services, but then they released video creation. So it just kind of, I wasn't even prepared to talk about it. So I'm just highlighting that we should be talking about these things as often as possible because the industry is changing so, so fast. So let's see if my code is quite done. So it's almost done. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, is it time for like, I ask a question? Go ahead, yeah. Like, um, local models, have you tried like the Pegasus cluster? Like if you're on the... No. Run them up there. no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe what that is? I actually oh, haven't heard um, of it. GW has like a high performance computing cluster. Okay. And so um, I know that's something I'm like starting to investigate is how can we run these models up on there. So yeah, just want, I guess, just. Uh, yeah, definitely could be useful in my research. So, so thank you for that. The last month is trying that for bio. Do you want me to do? Um, a tall guy who is sitting over there. Not directly. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because he's trying it like yeah. in the coming weeks. He's like trying it now to uh, models on the cluster. I was going to suggest we have like someone from the Pegasus team like talk about or have a talk, maybe not here, but just have yeah. a conversation with him about like how can we get these, open, especially these open source models running locally. Yeah. That would be just wonderful. It's like we have all we can do. Right. Yeah. Things. And it's really hard because you really do um, need the heavy duty hardware. And they have it. I mean, they mm -hmm. have a lot on that system. So. Yeah, it's Gaylord possible. has been here before yeah. under his domain. Uh, we can invite him back. Uh, so, so it's hard to compete. Like the tech log model that yeah, I posted yeah. the other day. Just I mean, it makes ChatGPT look slow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who knows how they do that? <laughs> I read it and I was like, I still don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, spring 2019, when I was messing around with Unity, to... that you? No, that was not me. Okay. Um, so the last thing I wanted to go over really quickly was I want to give a brief demonstration of how you can uh, train a, a fine-tuned model on GPT because it's a very useful skill to have. And it's a little bit of background here. You do you would need you would need data like this because what I did was I use and don't don't call the cops on me, but I used a library called YouTube <laughs> Download. <laughs> And what I do is I bring in all the audio data from YouTube download. And at first I was using their subtitles to glean text data from it. However, they're terrible. Yeah. They're, and this is Google. So their, their, their transcriptions are just awful. So I used uh, the Whisper API in order to basically stream the audio in from YouTube download and then send it to the Whisper API using this code. And then what that spits out for me is stuff like this, where I took a bunch of, this is a, like 20 something videos of FIFA or actual soccer being played. And it's just taking the commentators, everything they're saying, right? And so you do this and then you structure it again as data and it has to be in something called JSON-L data, which is just lines of JSON data, essentially. And you structure it so that you can send it to GPT the way you would a chat completion. 
And when you send in a ton of this data, you then can use, I think I have, yeah, a super simple uh, setup here for running a quick fine tuning. So you would need an open AI client. You would need to basically send this whisper data that I've collected as send it to as a file, right? You send it, the file is created on the open AI side. You take that file's name now and you create a job doing fine tuning on that file. So this is the new file name that I have. And I'm the model that I'm starting with is GPT 3.5 Turbo. You can change this model if you want to, but I'm using that. You can use GPT 4, it might be even better. So it creates a job. And then I basically can just watch that job. And so now GPT is running in the background, a fine tuning based on my data. My data, however, not great. It's not the greatest, it's not the best. So, and this will also take a little bit of time. So, but I just wanted to give a brief demonstration of how live, how, uh, you know, kind of live uh, fine tuning would work from a data perspective. There's a question. Uh, yeah. Question for me, um, what's the point of fine tuning? So the point of fine tuning is to in reinforce a concept or teach a concept to GPT. So one thing that we can do with fine tuning is if you have a specific domain that you really want to build a chatbot for, for example, you can, for example, take the documentation, the private documentation of your company and feed it all into GPT as question and answer pairs. And then what you've done is you've created a GPT that has essentially learned the domain specific knowledge of your company. And then when you query it via the chat prompts, it will be able to spit out reasonable answers without you having to read through all the documentation, for example. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. No problem. Can you provide a little bit more detail about what it, how you would set that up? Because you kind of said like, you create a fine tuning job, but how are you deciding? Like you said, okay, you're calling your internal documentation a question answer pair. Do you have to decide what right. that is? So, and how did you do that in your case? What I did is I took, I took a very generic approach to it where I just said, you're a British football commentator, generate commentary for an exciting game. And all of my data is just the answer to that. So a whole game's worth of commentary. So that kind of gives you the idea of like the slack you have, you know, the more detailed, the better, but I, I was super general because I didn't really care too, too much about it because to be honest, it's actually the prompt engineering that's more important uh, for, for this particular aspect at least. So what I did was I created the, the commentary with Whisper. I made it the answer to my prompts that I use for training. And then when I create the training jobs, uh, which are here, all it is is it's feeding in that data, the prompt and answer data as new data to, to basically learn. But it's actually just retraining a, small, a smaller training on that specific uh, kind of uh, the text data. It's called transfer learning, essentially. You can do it through their website too. You don't have to use the API. You right. Just drag the file in, and they have good documentation on how to make the file, mm -hmm. like for different types of data. Yeah, highly recommend the documentation on OpenAI's website. But this, uh, this like, no notebook is actually all you really need. If you have the data, this is all you need. Just spit it out. Uh, so that concludes most of what I wanted to talk about, but I will still show off the outputted video, which I believe should be this one. Let me make sure I get the right one. That doesn't spin. The 1201. Oh, that is? Yeah. And before, yeah, that looks right.
All right. Let's see how you sound. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. We're diving into some intense FIFA action today, so get ready to witness some epic goals and nail-biting matches. Let's dominate the pitch together. So unless something exciting happens, we won't hear any commentary, <laughs> which is kind of the downside of this, because I'm having the AI play it. So, so the, the AI actually has to do something. Uh, so we can try to see if we can't find a place where it does that. That's why you have only a limited number. Of right. So I have only limited in what I can tell it. So usually, like, a changing game plan. So, like, right here, something will probably happen. There you go. So now it's a goal. Great game. defending there. The away team couldn't find a way through the solid back line. Works. <laughs> yeah. Now, I like the ambient audience. Yes, I had to ask the ambient <laughs> audience. It feels so much more real that way, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Great opportunities to create a scoring chance from this corner kick. Yeah, Let's if I wanted to, yeah. It would take a ton more time. To create a scoring chance from this corner kick. Let's see if we can capitalize on this set piece. This is holding strong, denying any clear scoring opportunities. The home team needs to find a way to break through and create better chances. Oh no, we've conceded early in the match. <laughs> we should turn this around. All right, so that's essentially the project. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is the the Will Smith eating spaghetti situation. <laughs> Sports commentary. It's like it's, it's, you can see it there, but it's, right. The yeah, exactly. A human speaking over it is so different. And yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's, it's proof of concept for sure. It works. So another thing that you can actually add on top of this is uh, Eleven Labs is actually really res like responds very well to uh, usage of like punctuation and such. So Oh, like, oh, like, like, a question mark, <laughs> like a question mark will make changes to like a one reflection of yeah be beyond that if i did oh wow okay so i could oh oops i can it, it responds to this pretty well Hello, it is kevin oh sorry. i have a robot i have to regenerate it Hi all, it is Kevin. I am an evil robot. <laughs> <laughs> so it does respond to that. So, you know, if I wanted to make it more exciting, I could have caps locked the yeah. entire prompt <laughs> and, uh, and done a million exclamation points to make it a little more lively. Uh, so yeah, well, I think that in that original um, thing you had me read, if there was times in it where, or I guess that wasn't from 11 Labs necessarily. It wasn't, yeah. That was just an abstract of my project. Okay, yeah. So if I had had you read something that was more, exciting or had you yell a bunch it would have yes your clone data would have been better because i've i've done this exact same thing uh during a presentation and at home like at three in the morning and i sound very different right yeah i was a little like not enthusiastic no i wasn't like Oh, and he's gonna score! Yes, but if exactly. I had that in my voice, I'm sure that we, it would have sounded a little bit more like, like, like the guy was shouting, like in maybe in a real game. Where yes. Like freaking, you know what I mean? My my favorite iteration of this is when I was doing testing of this with the voice cloning. I actually did one iteration of it where I had two people, and I every other one. I so I I did a voice clone of myself, very excited. I did a voice clone of my friend, very excited, and then. I did one person does one commentary line, one person does another commentary line. And it actually sounded like exciting kind of like interchange between us, even though there was nothing. Should have done like an Australian accent. Like an you, you could have done anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. Much, yeah. Yeah. It's so much cheaper than hiring people. Yeah. yeah. You see yeah. now why yeah. the yeah. actors and actresses and everyone were really striking because yeah, we just needed a voice data. Yeah, exactly. What do you think the next step would be to get the computer vision part of it inserted so that you're doing a real game? So the next step would be to be able to generate the data for the computer vision part. So uh, one thing that 
I currently work on in my research is something called clip space, which is the intersection of LLMs and computer vision data to build a shared language between them. And once you do that, you can essentially show images and be able to glean some sort of text out of the image, something called a zero shot classification on anything, even if it doesn't understand what it is, if it doesn't know what the class is. So in order to do the computer vision side of things, you either need a ton of self-labeled data, which I'm sure big companies are working on right now, if they haven't done it already, or you need to be able to use something like clip space, which I use in my research to kind of generate the text side from directly from the images and frames of the gameplay itself. So that's a huge hurdle uh, as well, because you would need a probably a very fine tuned clip space in order to fully capture what's happening in a soccer game. But it would probably require less data than manually labeling every picture as what it is. And, you know, it's very imperfect. Like, for example, um, even when I use the fine tuned LLM here, I had to specifically tell the, I had to tell GPT in the prompt engineering not to ever say names because the commentary data had tons of names in it. Yeah. And if you have it include names, it starts thinking that you just scream messy whenever anything exciting happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid stuff like that starts happening. Correct, right, right. <laughs> which is correct, you're right. But it has nothing to do with when these fake like soccer game happens with fake I'm players on big teams. Say, Go. Yeah. <laughs> so often. Language specific about, data, no doubt. <laughs> I got lots of, I chose the tame British route, but I could have gone for the crazier uh, Spanish route too. It would have been more exciting, I'm sure. But yeah, so there, this, this project itself is definitely a jumping off point for improving this and creating, you know, the real time aspects as well. And the real time aspect is actually really just being held back by the, the hardware. The problem is I have to have this gameplay running and then on a separate thread, I'm generating chat completions, which take time to generate. And then after the chat completions, I need to generate the text-to-speech audio with the voice clone. That's another you know, set of time that needs to happen. So we're still a ways away hardware-wise from being able to, even with uh, cloud API calls, being able to run at this in any capacity near real time. But you could imagine though, in, in broadcast situations, this could totally be done with just a simple delay. Like a 20 yes. second broadcast delay and you're good to go. Like right. Three commentary. Or another like new yeah, game. Like, like, what Grog yeah. is doing is going so fast. And the it actually can almost keep up. The fast. text is yeah. like sending yeah. the text right. the audio and the video. Yeah, yeah. so, so there, it's like, this is not far away from- Yeah, right. no, it's not. It's not crazy far fast. away. It would take model, it would take better models and better hardware. But yeah. it's it's just about there. The same yeah. way that um, you know, like you see the Apple Vision Pro, and you think, you know, maybe this isn't there today, but that technology is clearly going to become more better form factor and take over the world. And I think, I mean, I don't have one, so I'm like crazy something, but there is like the FaceTime feature mm -hmm. on it that allows you to obviously, rather than if you're wearing it, not and you're kind of FaceTime your friend. Uh, from I think a video clip I've seen on their website, it's like uh, they essentially are trying to have like an image of you that's like, I guess, AI or maybe something that you put in, but it moves like the mouth in real time with what you're doing. <laughs> right, um, yeah. It's just like uh, a little avatar of you. Yeah, and, I'm sure that moving the mouth and doing all that in real time was a but, huge like, hardware challenge as well. Yeah. How does this, uh, going back to the video question, how does that compare to something like Google's um, reverse lookup and you, you upload an image and you say, what is this? And Google knows somehow like where this thing is. If it's, if it's like a screenshot from a movie, you can mm. upload it and say where, and you would get like 15 results from yeah. YouTube clips of that or something. So those are all, those are all based on uh, image embeddings. So it'll okay. embed the image as some sort of uh, vector of, uh, okay. of data. And then it'll basically, you'll be Google image reverse image search will basically try to reverse that. So that's a whole different process. Totally different. Yes. They've already just built this massive database of embeddings and it works. Right. Um, just scale. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Which is their forte. Right. Right. And so real time things that are totally new, like a soccer game, completely different. Things. Totally different. Yeah. But I, I, I do truly believe what I said about all games eventually having this component to them sure. because it would just generate too much content and be worth too much money. 
you know, to give people like, you know, creators a subscription fee to their games out API output. Yeah. Well, you could have your own game. Yeah, yeah true. Watch the game and hear yourself commenting on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why you would want to, but. <laughs> I just read about the existence of some Pokemon. Um, Pow World. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like a Pokemon sure ripoff. What it's called, but people are using it's like, I think it's just like an online um, way to play Pokemon, mm -hmm. but people have been using it to train like reinforcement learning agents to master Pokemon. And so I wonder if that <laughs> would be like you're using the Google football. Yeah. What do you what do you call that it's, kind of service? Like the, it's the game. It's a Google. It's it's engine. like the engine itself. Yeah. yeah. So I think there might be a like a Pokemon engine. If you're okay, great. Like, uh, oh, so that's uh, different. Yeah, I would love to play with that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven figures. All that. Like everybody's talking. Yeah. I'll look it up. I'll send it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That that sounds super interesting. Yeah. You know, this is a great segue for two weeks advertising. Yeah. <laughs> I talk about the trustworthy aspect. Right. Like all that training data comes from somewhere. It has issues. That's Many someone's different voice. Ways you could train. Yeah. Others. You know, um, are you in, if I put this on YouTube and I get $10,000 because it's great commentary, I generated that great commentary from my AI, but it is your voice. So <laughs> there's all, all sorts of uh, ethical constraints that are probably needed in that field right now. Because you could have just taken audio from a Brad Pitt movie and it would be Brad Pitt's voice. Exactly, yeah. Commenting, doing all their commentary. Right. And, and now comment. now my voice will be on YouTube for this, and then yeah, anyone can take mine and just go nuts with it. And your API codes, by the way. Be sure to change Oh, yeah. Because they'll be on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I could, I could blur them with a faster thing you do would just regenerate your keys because I'm going to, uh, I'll wait a couple days to post this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Screenshot. Okay, now I have it. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll change all that. But yeah, I've 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 unprivated this repo because I you know yeah. I, I believe that there's a lot of little bits of code here that people could sure. easily extract and play with to use yeah. it for their own projects or even just play with the project yourself. I, I think the it'd be fun. Whisper thing. We were literally talking about that like I don't know that long ago. Like yeah, can we? straight uh transcriptions from youtube you absolutely can thing. like the actual ones kind of suck so right sending it over to whisper or, or yeah that makes sense right I remember last spring we had the guy oh. present from, right right same idea where he was doing it for his course lectures yeah and then you could go back to your course lecture when you were studying and be like remind me of this part and that was a year ago so who knows what he's doing today with it right <laughs> Ooh, I think it was a pretty good job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your help. <laughs>